Um, what I'm talking about here is just leveling the playing field and talking about pathways for success for, for women and minorities. And, and I'm passionate about this. Clearly, I'm a woman. Um, I'm also from a uh, less wealthy than most background and um, always found that quite a challenge, actually. So, and we all have something different about us that will make life a little bit more challenging or um, maybe in some cases a little less challenging, but, but it's what makes us all unique and that's okay. Um, but it means that sometimes we just have to be aware of, of what those differences, how they impact and how people perceive us and what it means, how we can address some of it. And, um, and by no means am I saying that large corporates and big organizations around the world don't have work to do in terms of diversity and inclusion. They do. They have a tremendous amount of work to do. But we as individuals, you know, in the meantime, we're in these organizations. We're coming into these organizations. And, and what I'm trying to do is equip you with as many tools as possible to be successful because I think we have a role to play in our own success as well. Some of the things I'm talking about here are meant to empower you, but you also need energy to empower yourself. So if you need to take a break and look after yourself, make sure you do that. Um, and then, you know, take some notes and come back to some of these points because they're important. And I know that they'll make a difference for you. He is, but he's considered by some to be the greatest Formula One driver ever. And his quote is, I, I don't aspire to be like other drivers. I aspire to be unique in my own way. And this is something that to me is so fundamental. I fully believe my path is my own, and I know that your path is your own. And very often you'll hear people say things like, ooh, you're not gonna make it like that, or that's not the way to do it, or it's always been done this way, or something along those lines. I'm personally a bit of a nonconformist, so when I hear those phrases, I literally wanna run in the opposite direction. But what I'm here to tell you is that those are, they all come from well-meaning people, but it may not always be relevant for you, right? So take it on board, it's one perspective, but then you have to dig deep and figure out what's right for you. And so please don't think that there's any path out there than your own. So let me tell you about my own personal journey. Um, I'm from Louisiana, I grew up in a very small rural town, village actually in Louisiana. Um, I went to study math at MIT and, um, and then I went straight to Wall Street and my first career, what I call my corporate, my big corporate career, I spent 10 years on the trading floor. I started off as a derivative trader, interest rate swaps, and then I moved into credit derivatives, helped to build the credit derivative marketplace. And what I learned about myself is that after about eight years, I'm bored. And I just want to be learning. I love learning and just doing new things. And that's what's really exciting for me, are building things, just really just that intellectual challenge. And after about eight years, I just find myself drifting a bit. And it then takes me about two years to figure out what next. So my career is in 10 year chunks. So I'm, my first 10 years was big corporate on the trading floor, mostly at JP Morgan, um, derivative trader. And then I left to become an entrepreneur. I started three different businesses, pretty um, one a total fail, which is the case, because that's what it means to be an entrepreneur. You have to have some fails behind you. Um, and, uh, but I knew that eventually I was going to want to do something else. And so in preparation for my third career, I sat on a few charity committees and a few charity boards so that by the time I got to my third career, which I call my portfolio career, um, I had some experience behind me and I could really jump into being a board member, which is what I am today. So I sit on the board of Morgan Stanley International, where I chair the risk committee. I chair the board of Morgan Stanley Investment Management for the EMEA region. I sit on the board of Rathbones, uh, which is um, a wealth manager at FTSE 250 um, PLC. I also chair that risk committee. I, um, I sit on the visiting committee for the MIT math department. That's a lot of fun. I'm an associate fellow at Oxford University where I get to lecture and do a lot of fun things. Um, I've written a book called How the Trading Floor Really Works. So you can imagine it is a wild bestseller like um, Fifty Shades of Grey. And, um, and I just, I generally, I do a lot of lectures and I, I have a lot of fun and, um, and I love it. I love what I'm doing. And that's the goal, right? That's really the goal for all of us is to love, love, love what we're doing. And, and who knows how many I'm going to have, but there, there are many more in the future because why retire as long as I'm in charge of my destiny, because it's my path and it's my life and it's my career and it's my fun. And, and the fact of the matter is it's okay, right? It's okay. You'll know people that have these unbelievable clear dreams. But if you don't, that's great too, right? Because then it means you get to explore things. 
And, and the same way that I've done, you're going to get to make these little nonlinear moves in your career and just explore a bunch of different options and have a lot of fun along the way. So don't, don't feel that if you're missing, if you're lacking clarity, that you can't take steps forward and do really awesome and amazing things and just, you know, change the world and do something amazing. Because I know you can. I've done it, certainly, without all that clarity that some people bring to the table. Make sure make sure you are giving yourself the opportunity to do something amazing because why not, right? Why not? Why not start big? The problem is that along the way to take those big leaps forward and do something amazing, you also have to take some risk. And with risk comes failure, for sure. For sure you will fail along the way at something. And it's J.M. Barry. he's the author of Peter Pan. He says, we are all failures, at least the best of us are at least the best of us are. I believe this wholeheartedly because I can tell you that when I told you my life path and I skipped merrily from high to high to high and all these wonderful things that I had done, frankly, none of them came about without some deep lows. Failure is your best opportunity to learn. And I also believe that if you haven't failed, you haven't tried hard enough. You haven't taken enough risk. Now, when um, women see a job that requires 10 skill sets, if they can't tick all 10, you know, if they take nine, but they can't take the 10th one, they're nervous to apply. Men see a job opportunity with 10 things. And if they can tick one box, they go for it. You know, they're fist bumping each other. Woo, success. The, the truth is that if you can tick all 10 boxes, why would you do the job? You're not going to learn anything. So take that risk. Take some risk. Make sure you're dreaming big enough. And failure is your best opportunity to learn. Embrace it. It's going to be okay. Here's the bad news. There is something out there called the meritocracy myth. There is this huge, it's like religion, belief that the world is a meritocracy and that, you know, may the best man win. And, and often it is may the best man win. In some cases, it's may the best white man win, but it's not a meritocracy. Now, the problem with this is that people believe it and you're taught it. It's part of the corporate world. You're taught it so deeply, people believe it. And that when you tell them that it's a myth, they're angry. And, and the truth is, you know, everybody that's achieved something did it with hard work, right? And, and, and they, they absolutely deserve it. But the playing field is not level. Because if it were, right, when you look at the top of these organizations as you work your way up, the tops of these organizations would look very much like the demographics of the bottom. Or the, the tops of these organizations would look very much like the demographics of the communities that they serve. The problem is that because people believe in the meritocracy so much, it reinforces the unconscious bias that maybe women and minorities aren't good enough. Maybe women and minorities don't want it enough, so they're not working hard enough. You can't believe it's a meritocracy, in which case, if you believe it's a meritocracy, then you'll work against yourself. You have to believe that if you're a woman or a minority, that it's, it's not a level playing field. You have to understand that, and then you have to figure out how to balance it. And look, I, I'm not, I mean, again, I'm not letting the corporates off the hook. You know, they have a lot of work to do. Society has a lot of work to do, no question. But, but in the meantime, this is to help ourselves. So, Apparently, many women and minorities, most women and many minorities are not very good with numbers. <laughs> Clearly ridiculous, right? I know it's ridiculous. She knows it's ridiculous, right? You know it's ridiculous. However, because that unconscious bias exists, you do have to fight it. So it means that when you get into the, the corporate world you get into, embrace the technical aspects of the role. Don't shy away from them, right? Become the technical person. And let me tell you a secret. Most of finance is not, definitively not rocket science. Absolutely not. And the most math I ever did, and I traded exotic derivatives, the most math I ever did was multiplication. And the number of my students who tell me that they've been interviewing and the thing that's come back is that, you know, they were interviewing, they were really keen to do a trading role, but then they were told, oh, you're so good with people. Maybe you should, you know, go into a sales role. And the number of women who get railroaded into a particular job because of their gender, it's unfortunate, right? But here's how you deal with it. You basically say, and look, and if you want to go into a sales role, excellent, go for it. That's great right? Then they're telling you to do the thing you want to do. Brilliant. But if that's not what you want to do, what you say is, actually, 
Um, I'm glad you noticed because I, I think I am very good with people and it is one of my skill sets, but it's one of my skill sets that I want to take to a trading role. And the reason I think I'm going to be very good at a trading role is not only am I good with people, but I'm also very da 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 And you talk about all those other skill sets that you can bring to the table as a trader. Start right. where you want to end up. And the reason I'm talking about this is that the number of people who come up to me and say, oof, I'm not sure I'm good enough to go you know, onto the trading floor right now. So I'm going to go into an operations role for a little while and just better understand how it all works. And then I'm going to move into trading. No, you're not. It's never going to happen because going into an operations role is not going to teach you almost anything about a trading role. And frankly, given where you are today, you know, you're no better than anybody else that's starting off on the trading floor. So whatever your dream is, go for that. Start there. Don't start anywhere else. The number of people who say to me, oh, I'm not so sure. I'm, I'm ready for it. You are. You absolutely are. The good news. The good news is that I've been in the finance industry for 25 years. And the first 20 years, saw uh, no change in statistics. I kept looking up. And, you know, looking up at the top of the organization, it always looked the same. However, in the last five years, I've seen real movement, real interest, real energy, and certainly what's going on in the U.S. right now and what's, what it sparked across the, you know, across the world, I think has really woken everyone up to the fact that there's a lot of discrimination out there. And there's, you know, we need to level the playing field and there's a lot of work to do. I see the silver lining is I think we're going to move forward faster. And I know that over the last five years, corporates have made a big effort. Certainly at the board level, I talk about it a lot. We talk about it a lot on my boards. On this journey, pick your battles. Don't be angry all the time because my goal for you is to work your way up and become senior and change these organizations from within. And if you fight every single battle, you will get fatigued and frustrated and angry. And the sometimes the battles you should be picking aren't for you, but they're for other people. Many of us have some bit of privilege on our side. So when you see discrimination that's not pointed at you, fight for that too. Educate, don't discourage. You will be amazed that you, there are many, many allies out there who are trying their best, but they don't have the right vocabulary. They just really don't understand the issues. So when they... When they are trying to be an ally, don't get angry. Educate them because they want to be educated. And you can see it again. One of the silver linings of this movement out of the U.S. is so many people are saying, look, maybe I don't really understand. Maybe I, I, I don't have the right words. Help me. In terms of your, your path, it's not easy, right? It's not easy for anybody. Even if you were in the most privileged group of people, it's not easy, right? Success is don't happen overnight. It takes a tremendous amount of work, amount of time, energy, and you have lows along the way. And, and as a result, you're going to need people around you. You're going to need a community. Every time I have a tough day, a tough moment, a fail, a complete, just a no when I was really desperate for a yes, I phone a friend, right? I look for that support network. I, I've I've nurtured it, I've built it because I need it and we all need it. So don't think you're on this alone. Make sure you're reaching out and creating that community around you over time. It's a really important part of that success. Another piece of advice for you is when you first start working, you will hear from the most well-intended people, you will hear the worst advice ever. And it goes along the following lines. Just put your head down and do your work. Honestly. <laughs> It's terrible, terrible advice because the truth is, particularly today when most of us are working virtually, if we just put our head down and do our work, nobody will know what we're doing, right? Because nobody can actually see us. And so a better mantra are the three C's, which is collaborate, communicate, and contribute, right? Collaborate. Tell people what you're working on. Maybe they might have some advice for you. Ask what they're working on. Maybe you might have some advice for them. Communicate. Let your boss know what you're working on. Let, let people, you know, just, there's no world for that siloed, put your head down and get your work. Yes, of course, there, there's not, you know, there's lots of opportunities. There's lots of time where you have to get stuff done and you just have to block everything out and do it. But there are many other times where you have to communicate. You have to collaborate and you have to con contribute. And that's how you succeed because you have a path. You want to go somewhere. Let people know what you're capable of. Let people... We don't talk about purpose often enough, but it's something that is becoming incredibly 
topical, very current, and everybody wants to talk about it. And it's really important. It's interesting because I think most people that work in finance probably couldn't articulate purpose. But I'm going to tell you what it is because it's incredibly simple. And this is what's exciting. These banks, these large investment banks, commercial banks, broker dealers, et cetera, it doesn't matter what the term is, we facilitate, right? We sit in the middle. And what we do is we facilitate those who have money and those who need money. Some people call it capital, those who have capital and those who need capital. And capital gets broken down into debt and equity, just if you're curious or if you studied it. But we sit in between. And in the past, right, so our job is to just make, take that money from those who have it and give it to those who need it. And in the past, what we've done is we've said we're agents only. We don't actually have a view on all of this. You know, we'll take money from anywhere, we'll give money to anywhere. Well, that doesn't work, right? Because we can't take money from anywhere. There are rules against that. We have to take clean money. We can't take dirty money, right? But then on top of that, where should we give that money? Where should we funnel that money? And it's really interesting because in the past, again, many people have said, oh, we don't have a view on that. But ESG and you know, sustainability and corporate social responsibility, these things are becoming really important to people. And people are really starting to talk about them. And there are some really interesting movements um, where people are really starting to talk that maybe actually we do have a purpose as an organization and it's more than just agent and we don't sit back and take clean money and distribute it to anyone who needs it but we we have we have an impact on what we do and so there's a really interesting conversation going on today about what that purpose is and I think that's an exciting time and so not only not only is finance a place and and you know all corporates a place where I think people really want to change you know there's some real energy behind diversity and inclusion and better working environment for everyone but there's some real conversation around purpose and what a fun time for everybody to join what an exciting time and so let me end with success is in your hands as much as it is in anybody else's it's yours it's in your hands so dream big embrace failure understand what you're up against right because you know we all have to work a little bit harder sometimes if we've got some biases against us. Nurture your community. It is such an important part of your success. You're going to need it. Communicate, collaborate, contribute. Really, really valuable. And never, ever give up. And then you're going to get there. I know, I absolutely know you will. I'm so excited about it. It's why I spend the time to give these talks is to tell you that it's all possible. And I can't wait to see you at the top of these organizations.